My name is Sylvan J. Raman. Welcome back to Intentional Wealth. Today's video is talking about how my partners and I turned around our failing business in two months. Thank you to M&D for commenting last week and asking how did we exactly do that differently from the previous owners. I really can't tell you about what we did differently, but I can tell you about exactly what we did. So stay tuned, watch the video for some valuable insights on how we turn this ship around from going to red to black in two months. So we literally bought this coffee shop in like three weeks what was going to be a yeah. three month negotiation yes. literally three weeks yep and it was like what maybe four or five emails back and forth a yep. standard agreement yep and then they were like i remember when they sent me the email like okay we accept your offer you want to take over next week i was like yes oh wait let me ask Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure you know yeah. but i think that is so cool because we're still waiting over a year now for our our original location to open yeah but this one we took it over in a week yeah. yeah and it wasn't doing so hot um october was a red month because just a lot of expenses for us taking over but you guys have done a really fantastic job what would you say is the most important aspect of turning a business around like how we did it um i'd say the employees um because like our manager Wes has been amazing like they have helped me so much like just the little everyday um day-to-day -day operations mm -hmm. um like they they didn't have the SLP written out but they had like the the point system um so they already had like some standards there mm -hmm. and then when we came in we pretty much just made it better all right. Um, so it was kind of like Wes was running it mm. for the most part. Unlike the previous owners, they weren't there. Um, and then once the the rest of the employees saw how much we valued them, how much we talked to them, how much we were there, um, I feel like that made them do even better. So mm. it, I think the most important part was the employees because right. they're there every day and we're not. <laughs> yeah, and that's one thing I had written down in my notes is like, you know, I think that's one of the most important things we did is we met with the employees. We got feedback from them because they've been there longer than we have. Yeah, we only sure. know the shop for like a week, literally yeah. from that first month that we had. Mm -hmm. yeah, but they've been there almost over a year. They probably know better how the shop runs. So, mm -hmm. you know, feedback from your employees, experienced staff that is definitely important. Um, another thing I thought was important is we made some changes to operational management <clears throat> in the terms of upselling and i think that really helped us out yeah and do sure. you guys want to explain what that is yes so the upselling is basically when you go to a let's say a restaurant like mcdonald's right mm -hmm. and you decide to order a burger usually at a good mcdonald's they'll ask you would you like a fry with that or would you like a fry and a drink with that? Mm -hmm. That's really what upselling is. It's turning a transaction that might have been for or five dollars, and then turn it, finding ways to uh, turn it into a six, seven, or eight dollar transaction. Right. So it's the the act of providing more value to the customer or the client for so that you can get more money. Yeah. So uh, for example, a lot of times it's just a really simple question, and it's something in business. The, the small little details matter right. and they they come together to really make something really big so uh we just told our employees like every time you interact with a customer when they order something don't just say um would that be all because you're prompting the end of the transaction right. yourself without them prompting it mm -hmm. so you're basically ending the transaction for yourself in, instead of allowing the customer to end it what you should do is, let's say they order a coffee. Oh, would you like a pastry with that? We have cookies, we have muffins, we have Rice Krispie treats, we have brownies. Right. Offer them something else. 
and what we found is that a lot of customers didn't even know the other products that we offered because they weren't being upsold those products. Mm. And what we found is that a lot of customers, not all of them, but you know, if you think about it, I think the coffee shop does a little over 2000 transactions a month. Yeah, if you upsell 10% of those people, that's 200 transactions. Mm -hmm. And if you get each one of those transactions to give you an extra, let's say, uh, $5, mm -hmm. right? That's another $1,000 in, in revenue for your company. Right. So what a lot of people don't understand is... Um, they might be uncomfortable with upselling or selling of any kind. But what I tell people is, is, is honestly just a question and you should have the confidence in your product that it is good enough to be upsold. So I tell them every single person, uh, ask them, would you like a pastry with that? Would you like a Rice Krispie treat? And, and pick whatever it is your favorite, whatever you like to eat. Let's say if uh, one of our employees like, like the brownies there, Hey, would you like a brownie with that? That's it's, extremely good it's some of the best brownies i've ever had because right. then you can vouch for it and you, you'll create that excitement for the customer and they'll be more tempted to take you up on that offer and if they do it like just 10 percent of the time that can equate to hundreds or even thousands of extra dollars that you're creating in revenue without even getting more customers right because actually when we looked at the sales for october our number of sales, our total number of sales went down, but our average ticket went yep. up. Yep. And that's what kept us, you know, in October, we hit the highest sales that the coffee shop had ever done in its previous time being open. Mm -hmm. And that was the first month that we owned it. Yep. Yeah. You know, so I think that's what really helped us. <clears throat> Another side note is we recently introduced Rice Krispie treats and I have to say, I usually don't like Rice Krispie treats, but these are really good. They don't have that aftertaste, um, mass produced flavor. Yeah. Um, so if you're in the area, definitely try them out. Yeah. Highland, Indiana, yeah, little coffee gluten -free. cabin. Gluten -free, yeah, oh, it's, yeah. It's and they're gluten free. Gluten -free. Yeah. And that's probably why they taste better. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, obviously, we had to analyze the income. Yep. Mm -hmm and analyze the expenditures. We definitely had more expenditures in October than we had in November. And yeah. I think that was just because we were taking over and we wanted to kind of baby it and do whatever we could yeah, to get it sure. up and running, right? Yeah. When you look at analyzing income, is that more like, does that go along with marketing or is that something that's two separate things? Well, um, it, so they're correlated um, at times. And the reason I say that is, uh, you can look at the income of a potential business and the people who own that business might not have a marketing budget in place already. Right. You know, they can literally just be capitalizing off of foot traffic that really just passes by their store, which I believe that's what they were doing before we actually got there. Um, so, uh, I do believe that's something you take into consideration, but I feel like the way we kind of look at it is we'll, we'll look at the, the income first and then we'll figure out how can we market this business so that we can boost the income. Right. But um, the first thing I do is I just kind of look at it and see, is it breaking even or profiting? If it's something that is uh, profiting, it's, you know, for me, it's kind of a no brainer, just as long as I know that I can make it even more profitable. If it's break even, it's a little bit riskier. However, I know if something is breaking even over multiple months, I know that that's really stable income mm -hmm. that I could pretty much rely on. And all I have to do is figure out how much do I have to sell in order to get above that break even point and make this a actual profitable business. So um, there is a direct correlation between marketing and income. What we've noticed in all business is the more people that know that business, along with this product, services, and employees, the more income potential that that business actually has. Okay. So, and, and that's why a lot of 
you know, this is a newer franchise, so it doesn't have as big of a brand to really uh, leverage. However, that's why a lot of other franchises do really well, because if you think about McDonald's, they clearly do not have the best product because they don't, you know, they don't have the best burger. Um, however, they have the largest amount of people that know about them. And that's what uh, marketing is really about is how do I get somebody to know, like, and trust me? Because that's what the consumer is looking for. They're looking for somebody that they know. And knowing is the most important part because they can't like you or trust you unless they do know you. Right. So that's where the... Uh, the marketing comes in and then the like you and trust you really comes from your employees and your sales team okay. yeah. yeah so i think that's <laughs> important because you know they didn't even have a sign outside the grocery store that there was a coffee shop in there yep. so if you're driving by it how do you know yeah. right and i still think our coffee shop sign is a little small but we'll yeah. get it bigger it's free. in the coming time <laughs> yeah you know um but i think marketing is what really pushed us and that is all you guys because you know i'm not pretty over here <laughs> but maybe over there yeah, shit. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> and uh, but do you want to talk about a little bit of like the changes that you guys did and then um how that helped yeah so um one of well so we definitely started marketing and within the marketing we put a, a face and a voice to the coffee cabin right. the little coffee cabin um so before people didn't know who the owners were um it was kind of just there but ever since we started working with the marketing team that we have now um we've been doing like videos so people see our faces they're like oh they they look like really nice people let me go try that. Okay. Um, so it's just really just putting a face to the brand. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably how the original location in Cherville has done so well over the past years because everybody knows who they are. Okay. They know Jeff and Dana. Yeah. So now we're making sure that they know Jasmine and Joe and maybe Sylvan if he wants to pop his head in. <laughs> nah, because with this face, you, you, everybody's going to run. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, I think basically all we did was personalize the marketing, you know, mm -hmm. make it personal yeah. instead of just some random picture of coffee sitting there, right. you know, and then I think another thing that you guys have started that's been great is holding events at the store. Yes, yeah, Santa Claus is coming next week. Santa Claus <laughs> yeah. is coming to town. Right. Well, yep. So coming to the cabin. Yep. <laughs> coming to the cabin. So if you're in town, stop by. Yes. Yep. For sure. So I think another thing that was important is that you guys went in and you did the management a little differently. Your guys' management style was totally different and the operational management on a day to day basis was different. So how did you guys do that? Um, so right now we go we go to the coffee cabin like every wednesday that's been like the day that we do deposits and inventory so our employees know that they're gonna at least see us once a week at a minimum right. however we do stop in there just randomly sometimes if we're in the area mm -hmm. or um if they need something in the beginning you guys used to go more often but now that things have stabilized a little you guys go like once a week right yeah so like the first week we were there probably about four times that week uh just getting to know the employees more because we didn't even know who they were at first um we were doing like more videos there we were understanding like how the inventory went like what kind of systems were in place so we were there a lot um the first couple of weeks but now like a what two months and two and a half months in we just go like one one day a week to check in on them and um, help them out if they need anything. But um, we've also set it into place where it's becoming a bit more, I guess, passive will be the word. Um, yeah. So they don't need us as much. Mm. Uh, there's There was one time, so I know how to make all the drinks and I trained at the original location for about two months just so I was ready if you know anybody called off and i told them that however i think they thought that i would come all the time if somebody called off and 
this happened like twice in the same week and I'm like yeah guys I no like I'm not coming here <laughs> I'm not coming here every time y'all need to figure it out <laughs> like you figured it out before so yeah. it was really just putting like putting our foot down letting them know who we are learning more about them um it was really like a give and take um and like I said earlier our manager she already well they already had um like the point system mm -hmm. if the employee is called off at the last minute and stuff like that so um i added in an sop which went a little bit more in depth so i think the most important thing to analyze when you're getting into a business and trying to turn it around is expenditures but it's not something that you necessarily have to spend all your time on, yeah. right? Cutting back expenses. Yeah. And I think it's one day you had told me something in the car and I was like, wait a minute, what? Oh, I, get, I guess that does make sense. And you had told me this line that no business has ever failed due to expenses, yeah. right? It's actually the opposite. It's a lack of customers. And you explained to me like, Look at how much overhead a grocery store has or Amazon or Walmart. And I started thinking, yeah, but I guess they, it's exactly right. Cause they have hundreds of thousands of dollars in expenses a month. Yeah. Amazon probably millions. Yeah. A day. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> but it's all about the number of customers. Yeah. And so I think you have this really good way of putting it called value spending, right? Value-based spending. Yeah, so you wanna explain a little more about that? Yeah, so uh, value-based spending is something, I think I heard it somewhere, or heard something like it, um, and I, I just really held on to it. I have no clue where I got it from. But what I learned from finance is that a lot of people try to budget. They, they want to cut down, cut back as many expenses as they possibly can. And the problem with budgeting is that it's priced focus. And price is not the end all be all of any product or service. And what happens a lot of times is that in cutting back your expenses, a lot of times people are cutting back on the value that they're able to provide to whether it's you know their house, um, you know their family or their business. So uh, a good example of that would be um, one, one expense every business should have is marketing. Right. Now, depending on what size business you are, you know, your marketing expense might only be a couple hundred dollars a month or a couple thousand. There's businesses, I think um, at his height, Grant Cardone was sp spending millions of dollars every single month, you know, on marketing. Mm -hmm. And most people will look at that and be like, well, I can put all, you know, that money in my pocket. So why would I spend that and, you know, have it go out as opposed to like just putting it, you know, back into my bank account and using it for myself. The problem with that is when you cut back on that, that expense, uh, you might also be cutting back on the value that that expense is bringing into your life. So you might be spending a million dollars a month in marketing, but you might be getting three million dollars of revenue back off of the million that you're spending or five million. So if you decide to, all right, I'm not going to spend anything on marketing this month, then your customer is probably not going to like think about you at all. They're, they're not going to see an ad or anything. It's not, you're not going to prompt them to really come to your business and uh, buy anything. So you might lose that two, three, four, five million dollars that you were bringing in because you dropped the value of what you were putting out. So and then if the customer doesn't see that you're spending money, they might think that why should they spend their money with you? If you don't value your own business, why should they value it? Yeah. And really value based spending is looking at not only price is something that you should always take into consideration, mm -hmm. but anytime you're you're looking at a product or service there's other qualities to it so you have the quality of that product or service then you also have the convenience of it if you're only looking at price you're missing out on quality and convenience right. 
So value-based spending is saying, okay, if I'm spending a hundred dollars on this on this thing, is it giving me two hundred dollars back in value? Because I don't know about you, but I would go broke if somebody said, oh, this thing is worth a thousand dollars. No, this thing is worth the, the this thing is priced at a thousand dollars, but it's actually worth five thousand right. dollars. That's a four thousand dollar profit margin. I should buy that all day, every day, borrow money to buy it because that's just what makes sense because the value is more than the price. And if you think about the way uh, people think about their money, if you paid five dollars for something, that means it was at least worth probably six to you because you're not gonna pay five dollars for something that is only valued at three dollars to you. I think one of the value-based decisions we made, I'm not sure if it was October or November, is you had came to me and said, I haven't had time to put the receipts in yet, so can we get a bookkeeper? And I was like, yes, because I know that's not what you're good at. I'm not good at it. The three of us aren't good at that stuff. Let's pay the person that's gonna take what, like an hour to do it, where we would take five hours. And my thought process in that was that it frees up your time to spend more time on the business. And the most important part was the marketing. Yeah. You know, to get more customers in the door instead of like sitting in the back office, spending five hours putting receipts in. Yeah. And that was a value-based spending yes. thing that I did. And it was that brilliant. Was, right. That was like probably one of the best, like, that is like the best expense we have right now. <laughs> like, And it's so cheap. She, she's amazing. Yeah. Right. Like $75 an hour. Like, what is $75? Right. <laughs> That'll buy you uh, how many cups of coffee at our place? (laughs) No, but I think that was one of the best decisions that we made so that we could, you know, and I think with that whole value spending, it's, you know, I mean, even with the receipt inputting with the bookkeeping thing, I know I'm not good at that. I'm not going to break my head on that, you know, and then one thing I know I'm going to do it all wrong, right? So... (laughs) to do something wrong and waste all that time. You know, the better value is doing what I'm good at. And you guys are great at what you do. I wanna thank you for turning our business around. Um, And I think, I mean, where is there a way that I can praise myself in all this except I gave you the freedom to do this. (laughs) You too. I gave up the control. Right, right? you You wrote wrote the check. check. uh, That's valuable. Yeah, but thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for sharing with my viewers. No problem. And where can my viewers find you? Because you guys actually have your own little thing going on, right? Your podcast. and Do you guys have YouTube also? Or? Yeah, we do. Yeah, so yeah. where can they find you at? Oh, so you can find us on, like, you know, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and different things of that nature. All on... the uh, podcast platforms. Yeah. Um, the podcast is called Abundant Culture Podcast. Yeah. Um, available on all platforms, and you can find it available on YouTube as well under the Jazz and Joe Show. Yep. And we talk everything entrepreneurship, spirituality, um, like, you know, everything that helps you grow and develop as a business owner, or even just somebody who's, you know, has a W 2 job, but you, you have to interface with clients and speak to those people. Uh, We just help try to develop people into better producing individuals because we we like to think of everybody can be a consumer, but they can also be a producer as well. Nice. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. So just to reiterate and summarize what we were able to do to turn our business around, the first thing that we did was we went in and met with our staff and we gained valuable insight on their ideas on how to make the business run better. The next thing that we did was we analyzed the current income based on the current marketing. And we realized that there wasn't really great marketing in the business already. So what we did was we went in and personalized the marketing to us. We were able to start holding events to gain more customers. 
One of the things that we did was we just did cookie decorating for the kids and this week we're gonna have Santa Claus come in to meet the kids as well. Another important thing that we did was we went in to understand the systems and the inventory control and how the standard operating procedures worked and how to improve them. In doing so, we were able to teach and train our employees on how to upsell. And in by doing that, we were able to raise our income by almost double right there. The last thing that we did was we were able to look at cost-based expenses versus value-based expenses. And we started leaning towards value-based expenses so we could focus our time on what was important. And that's getting customers through the door. If you like what you've seen here today and you gained valuable insight, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and please comment. It's very important to know what you like, what you didn't like, and the topics that I can bring to you in the future to help you out. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think definitely taking advantage of all the resources, plus getting your name out there. Woman. Hello? Woman, I'm like recording right now and you done called me. <laughs>